After the ethnic cleansing in Nagorno-Karabakh that Azerbaijan carried out in September 2023, former Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, Luis Marino Ocampo, stood out as one of the few voices labeling it as genocide. Since then, he has advocated for the rights of the deported Armenians and Armenian prisoners who remain hostages in Baku. We spoke with Luis Moreno Ocampo about the new campaign that he is supporting and the window of opportunity which exists before the UN Climate Change Conference in Baku, the in November. So, uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ocampo, for, uh, for agreeing to talk to me. And if I'm not mistaken, in a very few days, you are starting a new campaign uh, to release the Armenian prisoners who are in Baku for uh, some of them for almost a year and also other people are there for for uh, for a longer period. So can you please tell about this campaign uh, when and with whom you are uh, you are going to start it? Well, it, it, for me, it's very interesting and very honored because a group of Armenians from different sides approached me. Uh, they want me helping them to to launch this idea, to launch a campaign, Armenians protecting Armenians, basically. The, yeah. idea, is, the idea is the there is the opportunity now because uh, in November, there will be the meeting called COP29. COP means a committee on state parties, of state parties, of the, of the climate change treaty. So it's COP29, it's a meeting on climate change. And it will be in in, Azerba in Baku, in Azerbaijan. So, and the people in Baku say this will be a meeting, a COP29 on peace. So it's perfect, okay, thank you for that. It's a good idea you talked about peace, so you need to release the prisoners to talk about peace. You need to record, to let the nagorno karabakh people to go back to the place. So basically, the Armenians decided, okay, it's time to go ahead. It's time to recover because they were very affected by nagorno karabakh occupation. And they are now thinking, we should start to discuss that. So they were discussing with me what to do. And um, basically, I... I try to explain them there is a similarity between uh, climate change and genocide. Both are global problems protected by international treaties. And in both cases are not working very well. Yeah. The Genocide Convention in, was not protecting Nagorno-Karabakh people and the climate change is not stopping, the climate change convention is not really working since it was adopted in Rio de Janeiro 29 year, years ago, temperature was always raising, always, each year. So we're failing. And it's, sim it's similar because there is no one controlling their states. So state has a problem. So basically, I believe it's very, for me, it's fascinating because, you know, I, I'm involved in different conflicts in the world. And but the Armenian diaspora is unique. It's unique. The Jewish diaspora was also powerful, but now they are complicated because they are involved in the conflict on Gaza, and for them it's very difficult to discuss properly. Armenia is different. Armenia, you are not fighting; you are requesting the protection, legal protection, and that is I devote my time, my life on that. So for me. It's great to have the Armenian community to work with and try to present why the law is so important and how we can how people can take the law in their hands and make it work. So that's yeah. why I'm yeah. And can you please tell me more about what will be your personal involvement in this campaign? And if I understand you right, now is the window of opportunity until November, until the COP summit starts. So it's yeah. about uh, only two months or two months and a half. No, and so what, what, what you think could be done in this uh, quite uh, narrow window? Well, I think at least the, the ideal will be to release the hostages. 
to release them because the problem is they commit no crime. They are in jail because the it's that what they are hostages because they are in jail to send a message to the Nagorno Karabakh people: you cannot come back. If you come back, you will be in jail or attacked or killed. So that's why they are in jail. It's a message. So it's very important that they are released. And release is had to be done by Mr. Aliyev personally, because there is no independent judges in, in Azerbaijan. It's not my opinion. State Department report say that. So that's why the idea to take advantage of this moment where there will be a lot of people in Baku to be sure President Aliyev avoid shame and release the prisoner before the meeting. If not, the meeting should be about climate change and Nagorno-Karabakh people in jail. Absolutely. So that's the alternative. Or President Aliyev release the person before, or the meeting should be about Nagorno-Karabakh prisoners. A delegate from Germany or France cannot be in Baku debating climate change when people are in, in, in jail in Baku for no reason. So that should be a big, big scandal. So, and to do that, we need to build first like a social media group, people demanding that. So they develop hashtags, COP29, hashtag COP29, greenwash genocide, and free Armenian hostages. And the idea is in the first two months, in July, August, build like 40,000 Armenians who each day, each day, they click in the message or they, <clears throat> or they send the message. The message could be about their own ideas, but the common denominator is COP29 hashtag Greenwash genocide, free Armenian hostages. So they had to use these hashtags to be sure we see we can then collect the the post in the social media and then monitor. Okay, this week we have a uh, fifty thousand people saying that, and next week we should be eighty thousand. So the idea is to keep growing and building. Um, when they contact me, they were like a ten groups from different countries. Now there are 35. Um, the idea is not that they, the groups make the statement themselves. Individuals have to be doing. So individuals have to commit themselves to post once a day a comment. That's it. Very simple, but very powerful. Do you think that uh, if this campaign succeeds and there are like thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people like uh, putting pressure on uh, Ilham Aliyev, this will somehow convince him? Well, the idea is start with the Armenians to have our own army and then engage the, the climate change activists. And there are many too. And then support them, but also they have to support, merge the agendas. When we are enough people, it will be easier to merge the agenda. And also include, there are many people in Azerbaijan demanding for the release of political prisoners who are exact, for different reasons in jail, but illegally are in jest. So the, after two months in September, we can start to merge with the other campaigns and, and, and make a big splash because the the newspaper, the New York Times, and the, all the big newspapers follow the social media. And then it will be the moment to ask each delegate, each person going to Baku has to go to see the prisoners. The idea is some people are asking for a boycott. Look, I think it's even better if people go, but go there asking to see the prisoners, making making queues before the prison to see the prisoners. The prison have to feel they are not alone. The prison have to feel we are with them, okay? And, and that's the plan. The plan is take advantage of, look, 
for me, it's always admirable how Armenians are resilient. No, you you keep fighting and exposing, and it took 109 years to get the American president recognize the genocide, but you did it. So resilience is part of your genes. So it's time to now to recover from the goons, from the wars and the nagorno karabakh and go back. We need to go back and and demand the release of the prisoners who are still victim of, of genocide in jail and demand the return of the nagorno karabakh people. The issue, could, the issue could not be abandoned. We have to keep fighting for that. Uh, do you see any role in this process for foreign politicians, for foreign leaders? Because when we look at what happened during this almost a year after Aliyev uh, made an ethnic cleansing in Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, actually nobody from foreign leaders uh, told him that he did something wrong. And just in these days, Aliyev was welcomed at this uh, European political uh, summit uh, in London. And uh, it seems that uh, people are ready to do like business as usual with him. But do you expect that if this campaign grows and involves climate change activists, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, this could somehow also uh, affect uh, the politicians as well? Well, um, I don't think Biden or or the president, whoever the president of Scholz, Chancellor, Chancellor Scholz will be involved on this. They consistently refuse to be involved in Nagorno-Karabakh. But the issue is that people going to Baku should be concerned about that. It's about them. So they are. we have a picture with the faces of the 20 members of the advisory board of COP29. They should, they should be sure they do something. So I, I don't think we, could ta- we should target the main politicians. We should target those going to Baku. They should be the active people. Yeah. And business yeah. people. I may I may sound a bit skeptical. Uh, let me explain why. Because actually the decision to grant Baku uh, this COP29 summit was made actually after the cleansing was done. And sadly, Armenia I was course. also um, among the countries that uh, like uh, gave the green light to that. So the question well, is... Fine. When the decision is made, then Baku is hosting the summit. Don't you think that it's too late to expect from those people uh, to do some protest already in Baku? I, I don't think delegates will do protests. Protests, but, I don't mean literally, but uh, as you said, but, just to go I, I, I like the them, meetings. I like, them, I like them making a queue before the... I like them asking Baku first, what happened with the prisoners? They could, do, they should do that, and they could do that. And uh, remember, the Armenia supported the COP in in Baku as part of the agreement to release yeah. the prisoner of war. Yes. So there were more than thirty people that recovered the freedom because of that. Okay, it's perfect, wonderful. So now we have to take a second step, release the Nagorno-Karabakh hostages. That's a step. And I don't know if we'll win, but I think we should fight, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, look, I my, this is a picture of my country when I was young. It's a movie about my case in Argentina. Uh, I, in those days I was thinking, oh, we transform from Argentina into Sweden. No, Argentina is not Sweden. And there are many new fights, but we learned that. You have to. You have to, that You never do total justice. You never solve everything. But so you never win the battle. But you lose. Then you stop fighting. I agree. That you lose, and then I don't know if we'll win. I know we need to fight, and yeah. I'm very proud. The Armenians count on me. I'm very like to. I, I'm very glad to to be part of that because. For me, it's very frustrating to see what's happening in the world today, in Ukraine, in Armenia, in in Gaza, in Israel. So having the Armenian such a group committed is unique for me. I don't I don't think Armenians realize that. I, I don't feel you realize how unique you are. You're unique. And therefore, 
I'm very glad helping you to move ahead. In April this year, German Society for Straightened Peoples held a news conference in Berlin, and you were the keynote speaker, and you made a very impressive speech there. And in particular, you draw parallels between the Armenian genocide of 1915 and this uh, latest genocide that happened in September. And I would like to quote, I think you mentioned uh, a very important thing there. You said that Nagorno-Karabakh uh, was not the final goal. And you also said that Azerbaijani leaders are claiming the territory of Republic of Armenia as Western Azerbaijan, as they call it. So how dangerous is that uh, in your opinion? Well, it's difficult to know. I tend to believe that it's different because Naomi Karabakh was Artsakh was never recognized as an independent state. Even Armenia did not recognize. So we had a, a problem there. And I think it's, it's, it was a mistake because imagine two, in 2001, 2004, Armenia had a negotiation with Azerbaijan. That was the moment to make a good peace in 2004, 2001. Um, you can invent a different institutional system for Nagorno-Karabakh. Hawaii, for example, for example, Hawaii is not connected with the land of US, but it's a state in the US. Uh, Puerto Rico is different. It's not connected and it's not a state. It's, it's affiliated. So there are two or three different models that Nagorno-Karabakh could have used to connect with Armenia. At the end, we will end it in a bad situation where Nagorno-Karabakh was a piece of, of Azerbaijan. And that was really affecting Nagorno-Karabakh rights because the US and Europe decided, okay, it's an internal matter. It's not between two states. That was bad for Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, but Armenia is different. Invading Armenia is, is a different cost. It's like Ukraine today. so. The U.S. cannot do what they are doing in Ukraine and do nothing in Armenia. So I think uh, President Aliyev will make noise, will make comments, but I don't think personally that he will invade Armenia. In any case, there would be no problem until November. So building this campaign it's good to release the prisoners. It's good for Nagorno-Karabakh. And also good for Armenia, to be sure that Aliyev knows, everyone understands his intentions, well, what his intentions are. Mm -hmm. uh, Nagorno-Karabakh's former state minister, Ruben Vartanian, he went on hunger strike uh, some, some time ago. And later, his family stated that he was actually tortured during, uh, during this time. And, well, uh, we understand that the... Uh, Supreme goal is to get these people back and to have them free. But as they are still there, do you think there are any measures that could be done just to prevent any wrongdoing to them, like this torturing, or, uh, or this also requires some kind of uh, outside pressure? There is a very good lawyer working for Ruben Bartanian, Jared Genser, who is doing different campaigns, and probably he will get something. But in the meantime, I believe the best way to achieve his and the other freedoms is to make it very public what happened to him. So I, I think it's very important that all these Ruben Bertanian and the others are released because there is no reason to have them in jail. No reason. So they commit no crime. So yeah. they, they are victims of genocide. That's why they are in jail. So I, I in the it's interesting because there is no there is a, one possibility before to make a case for for uh, crimes against humanity or genocide against Aliyev in the International Criminal Court now. But the, there is no judicial proceeding to release um, the, the hostages. That's why it's complicated. I think it's, it's this idea of the Armenians to do a campaign and make this public and engage others, that is powerful, could work. Yeah. Combine. 
And in April, uh, during your speech in Berlin, you also said that their captivity is part of the genocide and the message to their community. If you come back to Nagorno-Karabakh, you will be starved, incarcerated, or killed. The Armenian leaders became hostages. Don't you think that, but uh, this is, uh, I mean, uh, Aliyev is very honest in sending this message because he really uh, doesn't want Armenians to come back to Nagorno-Karabakh. And this is clearly what he, what, what he does. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what I say, what he's doing. Yeah, it's very, he's not hiding his intention to destroy the Nagorno-Karabakh group. Never, he, he never hide them. That's yeah. a shame. Yeah. And uh, my question is, I think you were the first person who called genocide what happened uh, in Artsakh in September 2023, in a week after uh, after the deportation uh, took place. So was it was... Oh, obvious... no, no, I, I tell you, in August 7, August 7, before. Oh. But there were a couple of groups saying that. There were a couple of groups. My my report was longer, mm -hmm. more focused, and, and pay attention, and I went to the Congress. So there was some attention in that moment. I, in that moment... I feel we arrived late. We arrived when the U.S. was okay, giving up. So we, we're we okay, but we arrived late. Okay. And uh, let's imagine that, unfortunately, I don't want uh, to believe in that, but uh, there is uh, no success be before the cops are. So Armenian yeah. prisoners, Armenian hostages are still there after the summit. Do you see any real uh, legal ways to get them out after the summit? Or it will be much more difficult. Well, depend, the... depend. That, that's why, even if the campaign did not succeed, does not succeed, at least will install the problem in COP twenty nine, because today it's like Nagorno Karabakh disappeared on the media. So we need to go back. We need to go back, and then the moment to go back should be November to twenty twenty four in Baku. So. At least, if the issue is clear in the global agenda, they will have much better chances to let them be released. Yeah. And in, in April, in Berlin, you said that Azerbaijan proxies will attack me for these remarks, but by, uh, I will ignore them. So the question is, uh, do you receive threats or warnings uh, for your uh, public? No, no, not really, no. No, I think they hacked me, nothing else. Yeah. It's fine. No. And probably they will, but that's why I like that this is not my campaign. I am just helping many Armenians do the campaign. It will be a campaign done by many, not me. And I think that's okay. Yeah. But for me, it's, it's really reducing my frustration to that. I, look, any Armenian could contribute. Uh, the the director uh, of this, you know, this movie called Aurora Sunrise. Yeah. yeah. She, she did clips with the movie and give to us nine clips, wonderful clips to show. I, I, you can show them I, because the clip shows different moments. Yeah. The clip shows a moment uh, when they are, they are forced to the desert, when they, another clip showing when the soldiers take girls and a clip showing when the soldiers shoot the family. So, and there, and, and you know, Aurora Sunrise is a movie uh, where Aurora, a starring person, was acting herself. So, and she's also the, the movie, uh, uh, part of the movie are cartoons, but part of the movie are real footage. <laughs> Եվ խրախճան կսկսեր, կխմեին ու հաջույք կպնդրեին, մինք միայն կաղոթեինք, որ մեզ չեն դրեն։ Երեկոմը կրոչ ես լուսինեին դարին։ Bekle. Bu 
Bunu satarız. I think it's very compelling to see that. And I think uh, any Armenian in the world, uh, they have different ideas, but they are committed to avoid the repetition. And suddenly, in a, in a different scale, happen happen in Nagorno Karabakh. So we should, we should come back and be, be, be very strong, stop this. Uh, Mr. Campo, the sad reality or irony is that, that mostly officials or famous people are starting to support Armenia and Armenian cause when they are becoming former officials. So do you think that you would be able uh, to call a genocide what happened to Artsakh uh, if you still were the uh, chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, I mean, acting uh, prosecutor? No, but when I was a prosecutor, I could not do what I am doing now. I can do much more now than in those days. No, but look, imagine you still have problems to recognize the 1915 genocide. Imagine, imagine, 100 years later. So the states, because the genocide is international treaty, very peculiar. It requests, the treaty requests states preventing the crime. And therefore states to avoid the obligation to prevent the crimes, they deny the existence of genocide. And they did it deliberately in 1915. You know, the, the, the German chancellor say, I don't care to happen with the Armenians. We need Turkey, Turkey in our side. And the same to the US. So denial of genocide is a constant. It's a constant. It's happened today. It happened in the last 100 years. Samantha Power wrote a beautiful book describing that problem. And she is a victim of the same problem because when she went to, to Armenia, she cannot say it's a genocide. She, now, Samantha mentioned the factual circumstances. She mentioned the fear, the hunger, all the stuff that we is a genocide, but she cannot say it's genocide. And it's funny because the book, she described the problem and 20 years later it happened to her. Yeah, so that's why for me, Nagorno Karabakh is the opportunity to transform the conversation on genocide. I don't know if you know, there is a UN special advisor on genocide. Yeah. She said Nagorno Karabakh is a risk of genocide, but she also mentioned five other genocides. So we are celebrating 75 years of the Genocide Convention, and we have six ongoing genocide. So that's why the treaties are not working. We need to transform that. We need to, the treaties are not working because states follow their own interests. They don't apply the treaty. And that happened also in climate change. In climate change, they sign commitment and they don't follow the commitment. It's similar, exactly the same as like genocide. That's why Armenians could do a big change on genocide and on climate change, both. That's why this campaign is just starting. It would be great. And I part in particular, I don't know how to do it. I don't know if you have young people watching you, but it would be great to have young people on board because they, they, for them, social media is normal. For them, they TikTok or so we could be great. As soon as they use the same hashtag, COP29, Green World Genocide, Free Armenian Hostages, they can do whatever they want because that's the beauty. The idea they develop is an idea, the hashtag, provide unity, and then each of each person can say whatever they want. It's a, it's a way to combine strong Armenians with different ideas. You know, Armenians are complicated to work together. So this, this would be a way to work together. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ocampo, for this talk and for your support to the campaign. And, and let's hope that uh, this interview will also help to gather a lot of people all around the campaign and uh, people that are watching us will also be using this hashtag. And let's hope that finally this will help uh, the Armenian prisoners uh, to come home. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling.